Hey there, my name is Malte. I'm the CEO and co-founder of AirFocus. I'm super excited to be here today. Many thanks to Product School for hosting this amazing event and also the session. So let's get started with today's topic, the state of modern product management. Before we dive into the presentation, a little bit about me. My name is Malte Schultz. I'm the co-founder, CEO, and still CPO at AirFocus, the first modular product management platform. Here at AirFocus, we believe that companies, products, and teams are unique for a reason and that a product platform should adapt to this uniqueness. And that's why we build AirFocus around the notion of modularity, flexibility, and ease of use. But today is not really about Air focus, it's about product management and sharing a few lessons here and there. So I personally love building products and this is really what makes me happy. So I'm a product guy through and through. I'm also a father of two. So I have a three and a half a year old daughter and a three months old son. So um, I have also turned off the video because uh, you don't want to see the rings under my eyes. Enough about me. Let's talk a bit about what the agenda is for today. So we want to dive into what is modern product management anyways, and then we're going to look at challenges of product management in delivering real value. And we're also going to look at challenges of communicating a clear product strategy and in consequent also the accelerated need for structural product management and dedicated product tools. So let's start by defining modern product management. What is modern product management? It's about understanding the importance of outcomes over outputs. So we will get to this a bit later in the opportunity tree, but it's less about building features and more about delivering a product that solves real world problems. We just released a brand new report on the state of product management and that 40% state a growing need to become more outcome focused. Second, spending more time on discovery and experimentation. Ask any PM and they will tell you that they should focus more on talking to users, understanding the market, running little experiments, and working on product strategy. The third component of modern product management is still the transformation from a waterfall approach to a truly agile approach, which includes continuous discovery. So a lot of the teams claim they are agile, but many of them aren't really. So they're waterfall still. People and teams try to change that, but it's just very difficult. And I know this uh, from my from own experiences. So one example, I still see a lot of companies have release plans for the next year, which is not really agile. So you can have a release plan for the, for the upcoming six weeks or two months maybe, but in most cases, a, a one-year release plan doesn't really make sense. Of course, there are exceptions to this. The fourth driving force of modern PM is the increasing need for product-led growth strategies. So PLG is a business methodology in which the user acquisition, the expansion, the conversion, and the retention are all driven primarily by the product itself. So you're not relying so heavily on sales or marketing. It's really the product that does most of the work here. And AfroGos and many of the other modern SaaS tools that you probably use uh, on a daily basis, many of them apply PLG approaches. Even though most people by now roughly understand what modern product management is, what are the challenges people have in applying these tactics and delivering real value? Here's some brand new stats from our latest state of product management survey. 33% of the PMs we interviewed mentioned that they struggle with defining and communicating a clear product strategy. And this is quite interesting because they spent most of their time on other tasks like managing and sorting feedback and talking to stakeholders. So there's a strong discrepancy here, they really should and want to work on a product strategy and higher level planning, but they, they, most of the, the time that they actually spend is, is done on lower level work. Second, 32% struggle with communicating roadmap decisions and aligning product roadmaps with company goals. 30% lack understanding of what exactly their customers and users want. 29% want to become more efficient at delivering features, so they struggle with the delivery side. 26% struggle with communication alignment with the different stakeholders. And at the 26% name prioritizing the right initiatives and opportunities as a big challenge. I wouldn't consider any of these new challenges at all. This is like what PMs have always struggled with. 
I still think it's interesting and a helpful reminder because it gives you an indication of where to fix things and where to focus on. Everything around modern PM doesn't really help you though if you don't have a clear product strategy. So let's talk about the, the biggest challenge of PMs, defining it, communicating a cohesive product strategy. So what is product strategy and why is it important? It all starts with the product vision at the top, which gives the product and the company a clear direction and which helps you prioritize on the different levels and creates alignment for everyone in the product and the non-product teams. And it helps you also develop much better product roadmaps, which are the communication tools to kind of execute and implement your strategy. If the vision is where you want to be, the roadmap helps you understand how you might get there. So what you see here on the slide is Teresa Torres Opportunity Solution Tree, which allows you to frame and visualize your thinking around product strategy and your product vision. So it's not necessarily about what is the, the best thing or worst thing to work on. It's about understanding what is in front of you and objectively asking questions that will help you reach your desired outcomes. Once you have defined your vision, try to identify what are your objectives? What are the desired outcomes for those objectives? If achieved, what does success look like? And then once you have identified which initiatives or opportunities do fit your current objective, it's time to figure out which one will give you the desired outcome with the greatest impact. Here's another look at what product strategy is and what the process looks like. So you have your vision on the left and the product backlog on the right. So it's going from something very intangible to something that's very clearly defined and that can go into development or can be implemented or executed on. From the left, when you have that vision, when you have that big idea, you formulate the product strategy as part of the product strategy process. The product roadmap kind of helps the product team and developers shape a clear product backlog and prioritize what makes it into set releases uh, as part of the delivery. So now that we understood the product strategy process, Let's look at why PMs struggle so hard with product strategy. The short answer is super difficult and super hard. Let's look in detail at what goes wrong from this very beginning when you have a vision to the very precisely defined product backlog. So very often there's missing understanding of what the user really needs. Very often it starts with not understanding who the user is. Um, so there's lots of data and tools and stuff flying around and you're just not able to put it all together. Then there's the above mentioned misalignment of the big vision to the key goals and the initiatives and people like suggested here, give you statements like, what is the strategy here? I don't get this. And this is very frustrating. And then there are the gut driven product decisions by people like this, the CEO who feels it, who has a great day, who hijacks the, the process, which is inherently difficult as outlined and kind of makes it even, even worse, right? And then as a result of the misalignment, the mis missing understanding of user needs and bad decision-making frameworks, you end up with unclear and ineffective roadmaps. And then obviously the delivery is going to be disconnected from the big picture and you're not going to solve the right problems. And then at the end of the day, it doesn't even matter anymore what's going into production. Um, you're not solving the right problems usually. So we now learned that product strategy is not easy and many of these problems have been accelerated by COVID. So let's now move to how we can fix that, how you can control this very difficult process. So in order to achieve that modern state of product management as outlined in chapter one, and in order to make sure you can define and communicate this clear product strategy, which we now learned is very important. You need a structured way of doing product management and dedicated product tools can help you create that single source of truth that helps you make better product decisions. So just another reminder what product ma management is. I really like this visualization here uh, where you see product management being defined as the intersection of customers, tech, and business. So you see that product managers are the glue that bind all the functions in a company together and they have to make critical decisions under enormous uncertainty. And from what we learned today, first and foremost, 
PMs need to be strategic about things and they need to spend the time to be strategic. So how do too many product teams still get the job done? Duct tape spreadsheets, PowerPoints, and whiteboard roadmaps, which lead you to become a feature factory and solve for the raw problems. It's probably not going to be the only solution, but a lot of the PMs that we interviewed found product tools to be the answer to most of the challenges that they face. 43% think that a dedicated PM tool will help them be more strategic and solve the right problems. And it makes sense. If you don't have a tool, it's like trying to drill a hole with a hammer. PMs and product teams need to be more strategic and they need a system to collaborate around the problem space. And you simply can't do that in Jira or Trello or Notion. Here are the key components of an end-to-end PM platform with your roadmap as the common denominator and around discovery, feedback, product edition, your backlog, and obviously the release plans that you then hand over to Jira and the other tools that you use. Our study revealed another very interesting finding for us as someone who builds product management software. So 50% of PMs state that product management tools today mostly have poor usability and do not really fit their unique team needs, which is exactly matching our hypothesis and our own experience with the space. So obviously I'm a bit biased here, but um, we are big believers of um, modularity and product being flexible. And we, we like that um, our own when doing project management, for, ex- for example, we are using Notion and Airtable uh, when it comes to, to, to spreadsheets. We just like when, when we can build our own stacks. And most product tools have a very specific and opinionated approach to product management which means they're going to always have a certain way of doing things. This is how you should do roadmaps. This is how you should do prioritization. This is how you should collect and, and interlink feedback. And we just learned companies and teams can't do things the same way, but they, they evolve and adapt as they go. And because of COVID, you need even more something that adapts to your uniqueness and you should not try, you should not always try to change it and you should be proud of your uniqueness and you're usually doing things for a reason and uh, you, you should build your product stack around your unique requirements. So as a summary, what is important in a product tool? You want something that adapts to your unique workflows and grows with you when you scale. And you also want something that is easy to use because we all know these systems with a million fields and views and features that I don't need. And you want something that solves very specific problems for you. Lastly, you want something that is inclusive, that allows stakeholders from different departments and teams and even outside of your organization to collaborate and give feedback. But also, especially with bigger companies, you want to create that alignment across departments um, by creating portfolio roadmaps. So bringing stuff from lower level workspaces to higher level workspaces to give C-level and, and other stakeholders a, a, a bird's eye perspective on things. So that's just our view on the space after a few years of experience. And I hope it's, uh, it's interesting and helpful to you. We all want to live in this state of perfection, but we need to get the basics right and we need to find a way and workflow that works for us. And uh, we as PMs, we deserve a home for us from which we can't do our best work because that's what we care about. So that's it for me today. Thanks so much for showing up. And I hope some of the stuff that I outlined today was helpful. A lot of the data that was used in today's presentation is from our latest study, the product first and new era of product management report. If you want the full report, you can scan the QR code to get it for free. We at Airfocus really care about feedback. So if you have signed up for the platform, just connect with me on LinkedIn and shoot over your thoughts and let me know how we can build an even better product. And if I can ever be of any help to you, just reach out and let me know. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.